The Story of Carlos, Chapter 4. Carlos waited as long as he could, then, <coughs> coughing and spluttering, he burst out of the cupboard. He rushed out of the room and down the stairs to the ground floor, but ahead of him the front door seemed obliterated by flames. Carlos hesitated then. Covering himself with a blanket, he ran towards the front door and burst through it into the garden area. He rolled on the ground to make sure that all the flames were out and then pulled the blanket off. He was unharmed, but very shaken. Carlos turned round to see the burning orphanage behind him. It lit up the night sky. He stood astounded. This was the second time that a place that he had come to know as home was taken away from him. He didn't know what to do. He was alone. The monks had been taken away. Carlos felt deserted yet again. All the old feelings came back. He began to feel that maybe this was all his fault. After all, it was definitely him that the men were looking for. His mum and dad had deserted him and now the orphanage had been destroyed. Maybe Carlos made bad things happen. Then Carlos stopped himself thinking that way. He knew that this wasn't true. He was special. He was important. And even though he felt separated and alone right now, he knew it wasn't his fault. He would have to sort all this out. He would have to find the monks. And maybe in doing so, he might find out who he really was. The monks trail wouldn't be difficult to follow. There were lots of footprints going into the desert. He would track them down. As the sun set, Carlos set out, determined to set the monks free if it was the last thing he did. He walked into the night with countless thoughts flying through his head. On he went, following the tracks of the masked men, until finally he could see lights in the distance. It was a village, almost in the heart of the desert. He knocked on the first door, intending to ask if the masked men had come this way, but the events of that night were beginning to affect him. He fell through the door as it opened and lay exhausted on the floor. The next thing he knew, he was gazing up into the eyes of a very kind looking woman. She was offering him soup, which he willingly took. He was beginning to feel that he had no chance of rescuing the others, and anyway, who did he think he was to be able to rescue his friends and the monks from such a strong force of masked men? Carlos finished his soup. He felt better. His rabbit still lay beside him. He stood up and walked to a wash basin nearby. He poured some water into the bowl and splashed it onto his face. He took off his top and began to wash himself. The woman returned, collected his bowl and was about to leave when she saw the birthmark on his arm, shaped like a wave splashing onto the shore. She let out a scream and dropped the bowl onto the floor. It smashed and brought the rest of the family running in. Two men and two teenage boys stood staring at Carlos. Then they dropped to their knees. Carlos didn't understand. He didn't know what was going on. He stood and stared. Then the oldest man looked up at Carlos and proclaimed, You are Carlos. You are the son of the king who was killed by the masked men.